Hello, I'm Program Manager and Community Chef Doris Dyer of the Sylvia Center. The Sylvia Center is a food and nutrition program based in New York City and Columbia County. Today we're going to be making butternut squash chili. There are quite a few ingredients in this recipe. The first thing I'm going to do is to peel my butternut squash. Be careful when you're using a peeler because sometimes they can be very sharp. Now that my squash is all peeled, it's time to start breaking it down. As you can see, the inside of the squash does have seeds in it. I'm going to use a spoon to scoop out the seeds. Now it's important to keep your squash around the same size so that it all cooks at the same time. If it's too big, the bigger pieces are going to take a little bit too long to cook. If it's too small, the smaller pieces are going to cook a little bit too fast. So what I'm doing is a bit of a, in between a medium and a small dice, a small dice is a quarter inch and a medium dice is half an inch and a large dice would be three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to put it just like right in between the quarter and half. We always break it down into batons and then from the batons we break it down into cubes. Now you don't have to do this more than one at a time. You can do it one single baton at a time. It's going to take a little bit longer but the more you practice the more you'll get to the point of being able to do that. I use a bear claw because I'm trying to protect my fingers of course. The reason why I protect my fingers is to make sure I don't cut any of my fingertips. I'm just going to continue on and break down my butternut squash. We're also going to add to this recipe one onion. So this is the root of the onion. This is the top of the onion. All of our cuts are going to be made through the top. If we cut through the root, the root is basically what keeps the onion intact. If we cut through the root, the onion will start to fall apart and it makes it a little bit harder to cut. So the way that I like to cut my onion is I get a nice grip on it. I trim the top. I'm not gonna throw this away. I can use that for stock. Then I would make a cut straight down the center. Again, I'm not throwing anything away. All of my little scraps would always be used for stock. Let me get that to the side. The peels and all, it goes inside of a stock pot. You have to figure out what size you want that onion. You want it to be a small dice, a medium dice, or a large dice. The way that we dice up an onion, let's say I'm going to do a medium dice. Because of the size of this onion, I'm only gonna to have to cut it one time. So, I'm gonna take my knife, my palm of my hand is on top of the onion, and I'm going to make a cut through the onion. I'm only going to go as far as my knife allows me. Once my knife gets to that point of being stuck, I take my knife out. The reason why I do that is because if I force the knife through, I can possibly cut myself. And that's what we do not ever want to do. So I made one cut. Now what I'm going to do is turn my onion. And when the tip of my knife, I'm going to start to cut down the same size. as I went up. Turning my onion one more time, and now I'm going to cut down, same size. Remember, it's the same cut. Then I have my diced onion. So now that my onion and my butternut squash are all diced up and ready to go, I'm going to start to break down my red pepper. When we cut down a pepper, or any type of pepper, or green pepper, yellow pepper, orange pepper, whatever it might be, what I like to do is I remove the top, I remove the bottom. All the seeds are there. I'm just gonna put my hand inside, rip the seeds right up. I'm going to cut the red pepper in half. 
you can see this white vein inside the red pepper all of this is bitter we don't want the white vein so we're going to remove the white vein when you remove it you should take the knife away from your body and just drag it along the pepper see now it's time to break down our pepper so this is also going to be a dice so in order to get to a dice we have to make batons batons we break it down into our squares or our cubes point we're going to take our garlic and we're going to give it a nice mince. I'm just going to run a knife through it really quickly. And a bear claw, of course. Now that I sliced up my garlic, the way that I'm going to mince is I'm going to take my knife. I'm going to put my hand on the top of the knife. Not at the tip because that's a little dangerous, but towards the center. And I'm just going to rock my knife back and forth. I'm going to continue to do this until I get it to consistency I would like it to be. Now that I'm to the consistency that I would like, I'm going to just get my garlic into the bowl. This is all of my mise en place. Mise en place means everything in its place. That just means I'm getting ready for my day. And my day is butternut squash and chili. So that means I'm getting all of my ingredients ready. I have all of my equipment ready. Now I have cilantro. The cilantro we're going to be using more as a garnish. For some people, they don't like large pieces of cilantro in their meals, so we're just gonna run the knife through no more than three times. When a blade touches a herb like this, it's going to start to oxidize wherever the cut is, and then that's where you'll see that the herb starts to turn brown. We don't want it to be brown, we want it to stay nice and vibrant. That's one, bring it back together. Bring it back together. That's three. This recipe called for two cans of beans as well as some corn. So again, you can use frozen corn, but today I had canned corn, so that's what I went with. So I did drain it, and I made sure to rinse it off to get rid of the extra sodium that was inside of the can, and I did the same with the beans. Two chipotle peppers. We're currently at a high heat. This recipe calls for two tablespoons of olive oil. That's what we are going to saute our vegetables in. So, one. Into the pot, we have our butternut squash, our onions, garlic, red peppers and our chipotles and adobo, along with two tablespoons of olive oil. We're going to let this saute for about five to seven minutes, just until it's nice and tender. It's been about six minutes now, so now we're going to season up our mixture. We're going to use a pinch of salt. A tablespoon of chili seasoning, chili powder, it's important to do this away from the pot because once you put it in you can't take out. So one, one tablespoon of chili powder, we're going to use a teaspoon of cumin. Get that mixed in. Let this cook for a few more minutes. We had it in here for about an extra minute after we added the cumin and the chili. Now directly into the pot, we will put our tomatoes. Along with the tomatoes, we're actually going to add two cups of vegetable stock. Now I'm going to allow this simmer and it's going to simmer for about 15 minutes okay so now our chili has been going for about 15 minutes it smells so good now we 
are going to add our corn and our beans. I'm using black beans and red kidney beans. It's going to make it even more heartier. A great meal for a cold day. Let's cook for another five minutes and then it will be ready to serve. So we're back and our butternut squash chili is done. It's very tasty, super yummy. You can serve it with some Greek yogurt or sour cream, or you can just do some cheddar cheese with a little sprinkle of some lime juice. Either way, it's always going to be yummy. Thank you for joining me. If you like this video and would like to see more recipes, activities, and community resources, go to www.sylviacenter.org. Remember, stay healthy and keep cooking.